<laughs> we're live now, aren't we? <laughs> Hope everyone has had a good day. Uh, uh, just a few announcements today. Does anybody have a great week? Do you want to share something? Nothing? Not that bad, is it? <laughs> no, they need a lot to be thankful for, and I know we all know that and everything. It's good to see everyone here tonight, and we'll probably have a few stragglers in, so we had a parking lot that's kind of busy, praise the Lord. Amen. Um, just a, I'll just share a few things before we get started. And um, you remember we took up for the Pregnancy uh, Resource Center. Uh, we uh, got a letter in the mail. They received eight hundred and fifty-eight dollars and fifty-five cents from us. So praise the Lord on that. Uh, also, uh, we have a Youth Fund Day this Saturday, um, April. 17th, I believe it's at 11 o'clock, is that right? 11 to uh, 1, 11 to 1 30, okay. And then we have, uh, and the reason we changed it to 11 30 is because of, um, because Kenneth, we have like a memorial service um, Saturday at the house, and that's between 2 and 4, so that is open to the church. If you'd love to stop in, you know, pay your respects and meet the family and everything, just continue to keep them. Uh, in your prayers, if you will, okay? Um, and the prayers tonight is Kenneth Greer family, of course, as I just mentioned, and Debbie Cheek, Bryson's mom. Has anyone heard from, from him today or from Amy today? Okay, let, I don't know if it was today. I checked with it today or, or last night. Do you remember? Last night. Last night, since things are about the same. So um, just continue to pray for her, okay? I know she would, they would really appreciate it. Um, also, we'll have our uh, second quarter business meeting uh, next Wednesday night, April 21st. It'll be at 6.30, and I imagine we'll do it here. Uh, we'll be voting on the following uh, uh, WMU leaders, brotherhood leaders, and Sunday school superintendent, and also choir practice 6 p.m. Monday, um, if you'd like to join the choir um, for anything. Um, I don't know how many people have already do you know how many committed okay um and you can't sing she's played okay so we need uh, i'm just joking there okay so uh, um can anyone hear sing okay um well again it's always good being in the house of the lord um there you go okay okay um but anyway, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, uh, Ron, Mr. Nelson. No, Ron Cook. Ron Cook, excuse me. Um, that was somebody else. I know. I apologize. Uh, Ron Cook. Ron Cook's a much better man than Ron Nelson. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> he looks better too. <laughs> uh, he uh, uh, and wise and much wiser. Uh, he's been having some knee pain. Is that his left knee? If I'm correct on that. Okay. He went to a pain uh, today. The doctor and they had to go back tomorrow and we'll try to put something down on his nerves. So just pray for him because uh, I know that's got to be painful because he wouldn't have said anything to you. He yeah, didn't know that's what we do, don't we? So, uh, yeah, and can, can you remember Brother Richard back there, okay? And all oh, he's got. Anyone else? Um, just the, the love of the family. They got a lot going on right now. They're a real close family, but um, just the Ryan's. Okay. We just got a lot going on and with some issues with some mess that was spread through social media that shouldn't have been caused. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about that. So it's just, this is a lot going on. Maybe they can really use some prayer. Are they in the church anywhere? Do you know? They're not. Yeah, they need a prayer. And all. Uh, anyone else? Brother John, he, is he out in the parking lot or something? <laughs> no, he had to take care of something for his mother. So okay. He, he had to run. <coughs> well, that's just important being in the parking lot, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to take care of mama, right? Yeah, sorry, he did. <laughs> yeah, he had to yeah. do something for her. So he, he thought he could get through in time, but I don't think he's going to take it. So. Yes. Can you um, raise that I'm sorry. Can you raise that Yes, ma'am. Yes, I seen him. I, 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 I didn't know if he's always going Again, it's good to see everyone with us tonight. Uh, uh, is there? It's too quiet here. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I 
But when we fix to start singing, it's like, are y'all recording, by the way? Yeah. Okay, well, I've got to get serious. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, okay? The kind of grace is heavenly. Father, Lord, we just want to thank you and praise you today, Lord, for everything you do, Lord. And first and foremost, Father, we thank you for salvation. Father, that's found in faith in Jesus Christ, Lord. Um, salvation is so easy, Lord, but sometimes we just kind of, we try to put it on the back burner. We kind of wait. And the Father, when tragedy hits in our lives, or you open our eyes, or we see the fact that we are sinners, and that we need a Savior, Father, then we cling to the cross. Father, my prayer tonight is people all over this country and world, Father, Lord, they'll see themselves as a sinner that need of a Savior. Father, we thank you, Jesus, for, Lord, there's been nobody like you to come and show the love of God and, and point people uh, uh, in the right direction, point people to truth, Father, and tell people how they, uh, how they can be saved. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, that we have that, Lord. And, Father, we have a responsibility, Lord. Father, we've been given uh, a task, Lord, to go out, commission, we've been commissioned. Father, to go out and tell people their need for Jesus. And Father, I pray, Lord, that we'll all be obedient to that. I pray this church will be obedient to that. Lord, you've given us power and help to do that, Lord. Father, we just want to uh, come to you tonight and ask, Lord, that you'll stir the hearts of us. And Lord, continue to help us to grow in our faith and mature in our faith. And Lord, help us just continue to, as we rely on you, Lord, that you will empower us, Lord, to go out and be your disciples. And live the Christian life, Father, that you call us to live. Father, help us be reminded that every moment, Father, we can uh, talk with you, we can walk with you, you can use us because there's people all over the world, people in everyday life, Father, who need, uh, Lord, who need to hear from you. And Father, you get glory, you don't need to use us, Lord. But Father, the way you set everything out, Lord, uh, that's the whole intention. Um, well, that's the whole purpose, the whole reason that the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, Lord. And in our heart is, is His home that we go out and we make disciples. Father, we just ask you to be with our church and let it be a place, Lord, that is that is walking in your love, that is being led by your spirit, and that is in, in a church, Father, that you are working through, God, the people here, Lord. Father, in this place, Lord, there's no, uh, everybody's equal, there's no big eyes and little ears, Lord. And Father, continue to keep our hearts in line with you, Father. Father, we want to pray that, Father, that we will thirst and hunger for righteousness. Lord. Father, be with us our, our, our medical service tonight, excuse me. And Father, as we uh, as Jamie comes to lead us in song, Father, we just pray, Lord, that it will and Lord, it will be pleasing to you, Father. Father, be with all the youth outside. Father, be with our schools. Father, be with our uh, our county. Father, we should be with the mayor and the commissioner, and Father, be with the uh, governor, Lord. Father, be with the president, and vice president, Lord. Just let, let us always turn to you, Lord, and deal with so we can receive mercy and not just Father. What we ask on the back of the bulletin, and there's several names on there who have requested prayer. Father, we just want to lift each and every one of those uh, uh, persons up to you, God. Father, we you deal with, you know exactly what they're. Their greatest need is, Father, you know why they're on the prayer list in the first place. What they're asking us as Christians, Lord, to pray to you. And, and I mean, to pray for you. And deal with it. I mean, they're looking at us and hoping that we will pray. So, Father, help us pray for those people out there. Also, we ask you to be with the ones tonight with Mr. Ron. And, and uh, we also ask you to, uh, if you will be with Kenneth Greer and Debbie Cheek and also uh, the Lucky family. But Father, we want to pray for them, ask you to surround me, and let them look to you and trust you during this time. Father, help us always be a disciple church, Lord. Father, help us be a disciple making church, Lord. Father, continue this to empower us with your spirit, your love, and let us change the world as the apostles did. Father, we want to pray for those all around us who are hurting, who are hungry, who are being abused, neglected. Father, we want to lift them up. But Father, we thank you tonight for Jesus. Thank you, Father, for calling us, Lord, and giving us a, a hand and feet and a mind and eyes and ears. Father, use us, Lord, to, to 
go out and share Jesus with the world. Father. We ask you to keep us safe. We ask you to keep us healthy. And Father, we just ask you, Father God, that our hearts will stay divine. Lord. That we, Father, we'll be a church, Lord, that's happy, holy, and healthy. But we love you tonight. You have everything that's taking place. Use us. Help us grow as a church. And we love you in Christ's name. Now God's people say, Amen. <coughs> All right, we're going to start off singing um, Onward Christian Soldiers, page 493. We'll just do the first and fourth verse. If you want to sing, you sing. <laughs>
if you have your Bibles tonight, we're going to look at John chapter 21, and we're going to look at verses 18 through 25. John 21, verses 18 through 25. You know, one way or another, we're going to uh, finish this chapter. Amen. I know we kind of jumped around a little bit and, and uh, just making sure we get it on, but uh, the gospel of John B. is a beautiful gospel. And, um, you know, some people have always asked, you know, uh, couldn't there just have been one instead of four? But, I mean, there could have been. But, folks, I'm glad that there's four because that shows a lot of, it shows that it just wasn't one person. Uh, it had four uh, witnesses of this who write down the, the life and uh, about Jesus Christ, the miracles he did. You know, some of them have uh, some of the same thing, but some of them only, uh, the only story they have in there is, is from that one gospel. So I'm thankful that we have uh, four gospels. Aren't you? Amen. All right, verse 18 here, I'll get to reading. It says, <clears throat> Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he, meaning Jesus, said to him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus whom Jesus loved following, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, But Lord, uh, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. In 23, Then this saying went out among the brethren, that, he, that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. In 25, and there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for another day you've given us. Father, thank you for another hour, Lord, we come together for as a church. Lord, and we can, Father, hear your word. Father, we can sing praises to you. And Lord, you can empower us to go out and, Lord, just shake the bushes, Lord. And just walk down and walk in places and see people. And pray for people. Tell people how they can be saved. And and just so many times, Lord, that you use us, Lord, just to say small things to people, just to help people, and just point them, uh, uh, Father, to yourself. I give it to you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that we are Christians tonight. Thank you, Lord, that we have you living in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, that our names are written in the book of life. Thank you, Lord, Father, that, that you see us all the time, Lord. Father, we, I just want to lift up each person here tonight. Father, you know any kind of struggles, anything that they're dealing with, any kind of burdens. Father, I pray, Lord, they'll find strength and help and comfort in you, Lord. Thank you for being Lord tonight. But Father, thank you for reaching down and saving our very soul. Father, we love you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, another thing about like the four Gospels, when you have four, you know, each one is written to a specific audience. And that's kind of interesting there. But I'm so glad tonight that we do have four Gospels because you'll get, and even though when they do compare with each other, this one may leave, not, I don't want to say lose something out, but the other one kind of, it will give you a better picture of it. And it just brings the Gospel all together. So I thank the Lord tonight what he has given us uh, in his word. But the title for tonight's message is, <clears throat> is what is it that distracts us? What is it that distracts us? You know, we've seen here how Jesus, he kind of took time. You know, he, he has done raised from the dead. He's in his resurrected body, and he and he's back on the earth. He appears and reappears to the disciples. But he took time here to 
personally go to Jesus and restore Jesus and get him back up on his feet. Uh, and, you kind of, and this is me reading here and just thinking I could be wrong, but when he talks about when he turns around and says, what about this guy? It's like Jesus had a private talk with Peter and asking him this. He wasn't trying to shame him in front of the other disciples and rake him over the coals, but he was trying to make a difference in Peter's life. And that's the love of our Savior tonight. He went to him, talked to him one-on-one. -on -one. But ever since his denial here, uh, Peter here in this chapter, uh, along with the rest of these guys, this was a miserable man. And I, I imagine that Peter was even more miserable but than all the others combined. I don't know how you think, but I do, because he was constantly being reminded about how he denied Jesus. And in today's time, if we do something like that, well, the devil's going to make sure that we're miserable. Amen? He wants to do that. So we know that he was attacking Peter and so forth because of what Jesus said about Peter. Upon this rock, now I will build my church and so forth. So you know he was after Peter. But um, Peter, uh, he was a miserable man, but Jesus came to him and showed him so much mercy. And, and, and the just of my message last week, week was just as God came to show him mercy, folks, God also come and show you mercy. And I love that about Jesus. He's never too busy for us tonight. And it's just incredible as, as the kind of God we serve tonight. But that is the Savior we serve tonight. Folks, I don't know about you. I'm so glad that he's not like some of the other gods that other, that other religions depict about their God. They're always angry. Remember when Elijah with the prophets of Baal? They were cutting themselves. And they thought, you know, he sees what we're doing now. He's going to help us. Uh, that's not the God of the Bible. And I'm so glad that that night that we have a God that, want, that would much rather show mercy to anybody than judgment upon that individual. But once Christ got him up, <clears throat> Christ was able to point him in the right direction that he was supposed to walk in. He pointed him in the direction that he was supposed to go in. And so tonight I want to um, share with you tonight, I want to talk with you about distraction, about being distracted. And you know, um, let me back up a second. As Peter pointed him in the right direction to go, uh, after time after time, we see where Peter made mistakes. But you know what? Peter was human. Uh, Peter's just like us at times. A lot of times, Peter said what was on his mind, didn't he? He would say, he put his foot in his mouth, some said. But how many times that God needs to realign us at times? All the time. If you're like me, if you're a backwoods Baptist, am I right? You got to, you know, he's got to put you on track every now and then and take care of you and so forth. But again, I want to talk to you tonight about being distracted. You know, in 1987, in the NCAA regional finals, the LSU, and this is, and that's Louisiana State, uh, was leading Indiana by eight points. We got any basketball fans? Okay, all right, all right. I'm looking for uh, what's that? Is it Faye McCorner? He's a big. Oh, oh, you. Back, I'm sorry. I don't have my glasses on. I'm sorry. I, it's hard to see you back there. Okay, I, I apologize, but she's a big Tar Heel fan. Okay. Oh, you are too. And you, and you, and <laughs> Okay. Amen. Amen. But they were playing and they were leading Indiana by eight points with just a few minutes left in the game. I mean, the clock was ticking. You know, like with many teams who get in the lead, they kind of forget what they're supposed to be doing. They kind of forget that, that you know, there is, it's not over till it's over. You got to finish and so forth. And so they kind of got a little slouchy, I guess you'd say, or or uh, just calm down a little bit. They weren't playing the same game as they were when they started. And even the TV announcer made a comment. He pointed out that the LSU was becoming more concerned with the time rather than the game. And what we're talking about tonight, we want to kind of focus it, they become distracted. They become distracted. And as a result, Indiana ended up winning the game by one point. And they later went on to win the whole championship. Now, we can do what we're supposed to do as Christians in this life without being distracted. We can do that. You know, that's how the donut came about, American donut. Um, now, no doubt that Krispy Kreme has perfected the donut. Okay, they have perfected the donut, but you know what? They didn't create the donut. 
but it's believed that a main sea captain named Hanson Gregory came up with the idea of putting a hole in the middle of the donut. And that was so that sailors on his ship who wanted to steer and eat at the same time could. Okay, they would put the donut on the, what's it called? The, um, it's called the, the spoke of the wheel, and they could turn and eat their donut. And so that's how it come about having a hole in the donut. But I tell you, I can just see some people now. If you like me, I have a donut on each spoke on that wheel. And some of you, I believe, we had it stacked all the way to the end. Am I right? But uh, but that's how the, that's how the donut came to be about. But you know, we can we can stay focused. But I like to share tonight with you some ways that we may be distracted as a Christian. Distracted. Number one is I'm going to ask the question is, have we become distracted when it comes to what God wants to do with us? Have we, have we become distracted when it comes to what God wants to do with us? Verses 18 and 19. Now verse 19, we know that Jesus was talking about Peter's death here. Uh, we know that. It's, it's obvious he, that's what he was talking about. You know, foxes, voices of the martyrs uh, tells us that that he went on, that later on, uh, Peter went on over to Babylon. And when, when this, when the stories about him was being written, it was in existence. Uh, but ba Babylon is like uh, uh, Baghdad today, or he even went as far as west as Rome. Now, some believe today that Peter was the one who founded the church of Rome. And the reason why they say that is because when Paul wrote his letter there, there was all, a church that had already been founded uh, in Rome. However, Peter, if you'll notice, I mean, however, Paul, uh, in his greeting, he never mentions Peter. And we don't know the reasons why, but he never mentions Peter. So, But his final days definitely were in Rome. He spent many months there in a, I guess it's called maritime or, or maritime prison. And and when, when he was over there, uh, people... Uh, in this prison there, you know, many people before had reported to dying in that prison. And if you look at it, I mean, if you go over there today, matter of fact, if you go there today where this place was at, they have an altar like made in honor of, of Peter. Now, some say it's for Peter and Paul, but we definitely know it's for Peter. It's just like to honor him because that's where he was at. And if you read about the history of some of you remember, I mean, you just imagine if Rome was in charge of that prison. You can imagine how they how they would be to the people. And it may not be like some of the prisons we have today, some of like the maximum security. I mean, as far as the numbers, it may not be that many people, but reading up on this stuff, they were forced to go carry out hard labor. You know, that's what prisoners need today, isn't it? Uh, some of that hard labor, but even that it was so torturous for those uh, individuals. And it said that he survived all the torture from those uh, in that prison. He survived all that and he continued to share the gospel with anyone there who would listen. Just like the Apostle Paul, other prisoners, other, other guards, anybody who came by, he would preach to them the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what he did. And eventually around AD 69, he was handed over to Nero's circus and crucified. And because of, I guess, because of a wish granted, he chose to be crucified upside down because he didn't feel he was worthy enough to be crucified as Christ was with his head up. So they crucified him downward. You know, after Jesus tells him all this, what was going to happen and everything, then all Jesus said was, follow me. Can you imagine Jesus telling him all this and he said, you follow me. And my guess is, like Peter, being the kind of guy he was, he turned around, he said, what? What did you say? What, what, what went on here? Then he went, you know, Peter always saying what he thought. He says, what about him? Him being distracted, folks led him to think like this. Him being that you just imagine Christ telling you something. This is what's going to happen to you. And you're thinking, well, man, how am I going to make it through this? How am I going to face this? And so forth. Then being distracted, he said, well, what about him? And, and I don't know, again, I don't know if Jesus, was, they were having a one-on-one -on -one conversation or they were walking. I'd say that they were over to the side of the list, but 
John was over here, and we'll get to this in a minute, but he said, well, what about him? Tell me something about him. You know, if you notice what verse 19 says, signifying by what death he would glorify God in. You know, God wants to do certain things with us and just with us that will glorify him tonight in ways that nothing else will, in, in ways that nothing else can. And whatever happens or how something turns out, folks, we have to trust God. We have to say, God, you know best. You know, God, you're on the throne tonight. And Lord, you, and, and Lord, you see me, you watch me, you have a will here, you have a plan here, uh, there's a reason here, there's something you want to do. I'm just going to, whatever happens, God, I'm going to trust you. And that's the faith that we need to have. And, and, and we can't let anything distract us from that. You know, in April of 1999, Casey Bernal was one of the <clears throat> victims in the, it's called Columbine High School shooting. And it's believed that reported that before she was fatally shot, that she was asked if she believed in God and her being a Christian, she said, yes. Now, Michael W. Smith He's a Christian artist. He came out with a song, This Is Your Time. If you ain't never heard that song, I recommend you to, uh, if, you'll, if you'll put it on the internet, Google it, you'll find this song and listen to this song. But before this song is played, you'll see like, it's like a, he's honoring this life of this young lady. And it has a clip on there of her, like a video recording of her talking about her faith. And she's telling her love for Jesus and so forth. But that is on that, that video uh, when, when you watch it. You know, another song has been uh, made uh, in honor of her that talks about it. And also a book has been written in her honor. But whether she was asked the question or not, her courage has impacted. It has influenced. It has inspired thousands of people and a lot of teenagers to take a stand for Jesus Christ, no matter what the cost is. And folks, I think as believers today, we too need to have that mindset. We need to say, you know, God, whatever happens, Father, I'm going to live for you. God, whatever happens, I'm going to honor you here, and I'm going to live for you so you'll get all the glory that you can out of my life. And folks, I want that today. And, and if, if something's ever happened, some kind of accident, some kind of incident, you know, that should be all of our prayers uh, tonight. You know, if this did not happen, uh, if this did not happen, of course, we don't really know how God would have used her. We don't know what God would have went on to do there, but, but she may not have touched as many people as she had uh, being martyred as she was. So our focus could be on God. Um, it could be on, I mean, it could be, our focus could be on God. How do you want to glorify yourself with me? But now some say that story uh, it isn't exactly correct. Uh, some say it happened different, but there are some who say it happened this way. But regardless, she was a Christian, a young Christian woman, and she was faced with that challenge. All what Jesus had saved from this young girl, uh, I believe she still would have said yes. You know, Jesus was speaking to Peter uh, about his death about all what would happen again. He would be in a position where uh, people were toting him around. People were pulling him around, and he had to go with it. And he said, but this is how you're going to glorify me in your death. But you know what? God wants to use us. Now, God did use Peter in life to glorify him. Folks, right off the bat, in the day of Pentecost, look what God did with Peter. Folks, it wasn't Peter doing that. It was the Spirit of God. And folks, that same spirit that was in the Apostle Peter is the same spirit that is in you and I tonight. And so as Peter, he, God was talking about using him to bring glory in his death. But God also used him and brought glory to God in his life. And folks, he also wants to do with, each, with that with each and every one of us today. Uh, he, wants, he wants to use us to bring glory to his name and to honor him and so forth. Um, secondly, have we become distracted when it comes to what God wants to do with others? Not just with what God wants to do with us, but with God, but with what God wants to do with others. Verses 20 through 23. You know, once Jesus told Peter what he was to do, Peter asked, well, what about him? You know, this is going to take place in my life. 
you know, I don't really want to be there, but you're saying this is what's going to happen. This is something I can't do anything about. You're, you're seeing down the road say this is what's going to happen. Well, what about this guy? Tell me what's going on with this guy. And what he's talking about, the Bible identifies as the disciple who Jesus loved. And also the one who sat with him uh, or leaned on his breast at the supper. Folks, this is obviously the Apostle John or John the Apostle. I'm not sure why he referred to himself this way, but folks, it must have been something to honor God more and himself less. It had to be something to, to honor or to magnify Jesus more than to magnify himself. And folks, if you read to the, the John's Gospel, you'll see where it says the other disciple. Or it talks, it also says like another disciple. And, and, and his name is never written in here uh, in, in his gospel like that. He never puts his name, this is John, or so forth. And maybe it's because he didn't want any attention drawn to himself. But you got to imagine what, uh, what John experienced with Jesus. Folks, he loved Jesus. And when it says the disciple who Jesus loved, I don't think that, that Jesus had favor. He did have an inner circle once he took, but he, I think he loved them all equally. But I think why it says the disciple whom Jesus loved is because John allowed Jesus to love him that much. Uh, uh, John loved Jesus wholeheartedly here. Um, as stated here, uh, he's believed to be the one nearest to Jesus at the table. That's what he's just telling us here, that the one who uh, also leaned on his breast at the supper. If you remember, he said, one of you going to betray me tonight. And Peter motioned for John to kind of lean over and say, like, ask him. You know, he'll tell you, come on, who would like, basically like that. And 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 evidently he did. Uh, it's believed to be the one uh, who outran Peter or who outran Peter to the grave. You know, Peter took off first, but John must have passed him. When he was at the Peter, he stood at the door. Peter went on in, and then he went on in, and, and he saw and believed. It isn't about it. It says that he saw and believed. And then it was, he's believed to be the disciple when they, that was known by the high priest. Not the high priest, but the, uh, um, uh, I guess the high priest, that's what I'm trying to say. The high priest, and he led him into the courtyard. Uh, he went and asked the girl at the door, hey, can you let this guy in? See, the high priest knew him, so he was granted access to come in, but he had to ask for Peter. And then we know what happened when Peter came in. He denied him three times, and so forth. And also, he was he's believed to be the one who, who recognized Jesus first on the shore. Remember our message. He, when he done that miracle, he said, hey, it's the Lord. Nobody else recognized him like that, but John recognized him. And it's also believed that one to be at the cross when Jesus was dying. And he said, Mother, here's your son. And he said, here's your mother. What did it say? That disciple took his mother into his home from that day forward. You see, there's another message on it. God cares about family today. But that's what he done uh, to him. Um, now, for time's sake, I'll give you... Three reasons on why this could be John. One, John's gospel is the only one that says this. No other gospel says this except John's gospel. Two, in his letter, uh, particularly in the first John, he talks so much about the Lord's love. If you read first John, you'll see that in that in that in that epistle about God's love. Matter of fact, a lot of people's favorite verse is God is love in there. It's a powerful, powerful book. But he talks so much about love. And third, in verse 24, after Jesus said, after Jesus said this about the disciple whom he loved, John writes, This is the, the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things down, the apostle John. A little bit about uh, John tonight. I'm going to read this. This is that book of Fox, uh, Fox Force of the Martyrs. I'm not going to read the whole thing about John, but. It has a lot of history about all the apostles and people who've been martyred for the faith all through time and so forth. But I want to read something to you. It says, John certainly, certainly did not live a long life unscathed by pain and suffering. His emotional trials must have been considerable. He lived during times in which those who killed or abused Christians had nothing to fear from the law. 
In fact, they were sometimes carried out by the law. The painful death of a friend after friend must have taken a toll on John. And that was like all the other disciples dying for their faith. It started probably had to eventually hurt his heart. Number one, Jesus. But he saw him resurrected, of course, but all his, but none of his friends came back. Because it wasn't time. You know, the rapture hadn't happened. Jesus hadn't come back. So he's seen all this uh, death after death with all his friends. Uh, he was the oldest apostle. But tradition holds that, that on one occasion, John was scheduled for boiling in oil. He escaped by divine intervention. Now, anything you want to read about that, it, point, it talks about that, is it tells that they don't know how he escaped. But somehow he, by divine intervention, he escaped. And folks also think of Peter. Remember, he was in jail. And what happened? The angel came and unlocked that door. It may have been something like that. Um, but I ain't never found out exactly how he escaped, but it's his divine intervention. Uh, his exile on Patmos uh, could have easily been a death sentence where he re received the revelation of Jesus Christ of uh, when, uh, when Emperor uh, Domitian who had exiled him to Patmos had died. John was brought back to Ephesus where he was confined for two years. And that's where we think the Gospel of John was written and the Epistle of John was written. Of course, Revelation was written on the island of Patmos. It says it's written that he was compelled to drink poison, but was unharmed and finally died in peace. And that's an awesome story about the Apostle John there. You know, when God uses someone differently than he does with us, folks, we can help them. We can pray for them and we can support them. Now, a lot of people are doing things today that 50 years ago, 100 years ago, they weren't reaching out to people that way. It's just our culture has changed, and a lot more, there's a lot more areas where who people who need a savior or who need Jesus, people who've been delivered from that, get into those spots and point those people to Christ. As a matter of fact, in Baptist Press, I just uh, recently read there's a pastor, um, and I actually wouldn't heard him speak, uh, but he he said since uh, December they have baptized a thousand people. Can you imagine that? Since December, a thousand people this church in Tennessee back, baptized. But you, but I mean that's powerful. That is awesome right there. But you know what? I also like. I called in that article. It had a guy baptizing a girl in there, and the story went on to say that he was a former Satanist, and he was baptizing this girl who was also was a former Satanist. And folks, that inspired me right there. I mean, there's all kind of ministries today that God is reaching out and wanting to put people in to go tell others about Christ. But think about the, our, our missionaries, for, for instance. Think about Eddie Armstrong and Lottie Moon and so forth. Folks, do you, I, I, probably everybody wasn't clapping and they weren't getting all the support when they went out. But folks, since they went out and they died and gone, we're still supporting those missions. Can you imagine the rewards that these women are going to get? Think about that. See, the, that's why that's why the judgment seat of Christ doesn't take place until after the rapture of the church, because all those things that people did, that's when He's going to reward them. So just think, all these things they've even been here, but they're but because of the things they did, because they got the call on their life and they caught that vision and they, and they had faith and they stepped out. Look, they're still reaping today. There's a lot of pastors out there today. They're still playing their tapes. They're still playing their videos. They're still selling their books. And they'll also, because even though they're not here, doesn't mean they're not going to get rewarded for that. That's why people, when we leave money to the church after we pass, hey, that's rewards for us. Because it's doing the work of the kingdom, the work of the Lord, and so forth. And I know one pastor, uh, I hope they kind of read publish, I guess, or start selling his study Bible again. I'm going to get one. Uh, right now, they are extremely high, crazy high. I'm not saying the Word of God is not worth it, but I just, I, I can't put that on, on the Bible, but I'm hoping, my prayer is, is that they're going to go back and read, sell that Bible again for a regular price, and I'm going to have me one, okay? But 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 they, they sell those things and, and so forth, but sometimes, but that, that's what God's opened doors today. Folks, you can reach people. 
that nobody else can reach. I mean, that's why when you, there's all kind of testimonies. If you watch on it, I mean, you can see the people who God just, the only reason they say, ladies and gentlemen, like, oh, is he reached down and picked them up. They were in very hard times, very, very outcast and so forth, but Jesus saved them. And then you know what happens after he gets them on the feet? He sets them on the rock. He puts a new song in their heart. He enters their life. Look, sometimes he sends them straight back to those other people so that they can reach other people just like Jesus reached them. And it's an awesome thing. So at the end of the day, folks, it's, uh, <clears throat> it, it's, it, it's all about how God wants to get glory in them. And folks, if we're distracted by that, we're going to be more caught up with what God's wanting to do with them rather than what God wants to do with us. So we got to make sure we're not distracted. And, and Jesus, what did Jesus tell Peter here? What is it to you? You know, what's it to you what I do with him? You, Peter, follow me. Folks, that's the, that's the, that's the mindset you and I have to have tonight. We, have, we can't always get caught up in what God, I mean, it's good to see what God's doing to people. But we can't be on top of saying, well, we can't do this, you can't do that. You ought to not do this. Because look, God's put that in their heart. He's wanting to use them that way. Because we get off uh, going in the direction we're supposed to go in, and we're focused here, we need to get back on our track. Just like he's telling here. And thirdly here, have we become distracted when it comes to what God wants to do with Jesus? Have we become distracted when it comes to what God wants to do with us? with others, and finally here with Jesus, 24, 25. John says here in verse 25, he says, and there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. And he closes out with amen. Do you suppose that Jesus wants to use you tonight in other ways or different ways or more ways, but somehow, somewhere we're being distracted, so we're not able to, uh, I mean, we're only able to do the normal and not the abnormal. Or we're, or we're only, because we're distracted, we're only able to do the usual instead of the unusual. Of course, with some things, we need to continue to do certain things like routine or repetition. But with some things, God wants to do new with you. He may want to do something new with you. He may want to do some, start something fresh with you. Do something different with you. Reach, reach people in a different way with you. You know, Jesus did several miracles with spit here in the Bible. And folks, he didn't chew the Bible or did snuff, okay? If I was doing them things properly, okay? But he didn't do those, but he only done one miracle. Where he spat on the ground, made clay, put it over the guy's eyes, and told him to go watch. He only did that one time. And so there's some fine times with us, God may want to do something one time. And if we're distracted, we're going to miss that. Um, we recently received a phone call, and it was about a grandmother who had two grandkids going, and she said, I want to pay for one of the grandkids. I, that blessed my heart there because she wanted to have a, 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 a hand in that of what God was going to do. And she'll so she will sow or she will reap blessings from that that she'll she'll never know until she gets in eternity. But that was something so sweet when I heard that. And you know what? It's only once. It just came at the time say, hey, I can do this. Folks, we need to be looking for those times. Only once we can do something. But folks, if we're distracted, distracted, we could miss that. And folks, I know you're like me tonight. I mean, I don't want to miss anything. Especially if it's good. Okay? I don't want to miss that. I want to make sure I, 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 I see that and I do that and so forth. I want to make sure that, that i got a right relationship with God. And folks, that calls for me to... to best sin and to walk right to read my Bible and to draw close to the Lord. We all have to do that. And but because if we're not, if we're just doing our own thing and we're not drawing close to Jesus, look, sometimes we can't see Him like we can other times. But I, I want to know things in my heart. 
I, I want to hear things. I want to see things. And I want to be led to do things for Jesus. Because he's still doing that today. You know, don't think that the things that John, uh, the things that John talked about here were not as important as the things he wrote about. Some are probably saying, well, you know, if they were that important, he would have put them in there. But why did he say he didn't write everything? Because he said that the world itself could not contain them. Folks, everything Jesus did was important. And folks, when he prods your heart and he shows you something you can do, listen, as Christians, we got to jump on it. We say, yes, Lord, I want to do that for you. You know, I mean, try not to turn your head. Try not to go in the other direction. Say, God, I'm yours today. I know I'm running for this or I got to be here for time, but God, I'm going to do what you're asking me to do. So don't lose those opportunities. And please do not be distracted. Because if we're distracted, it'll kind of get us off course. Amen. It'll get us off there. So Jesus, he, wants, he, he did so many more things that John did not write about. And, and I want things in my life. I want him to do a bunch of things in my life. Because you know, we only get one go around with this. We get one life. That's what it is. One time. And folks, I, you know, uh, you talk to people who were saved later, and, and I knew a, a friend up in the mountains. He'd come to Christ. He said and he was doing everything, all he could. If, 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 it, if, it, if, if it opened up here to do this, this opportunity... Uh, this time to serve, he jumped all up. He told me, he said, man, I spent most of my life living for the devil. He said, now I'm going to live for God. And folks, I ain't never forgot that. Again, anything we do, look, God's going to reward you. God's going to use you. But God's going to bless you. And when, we're, and, uh, you know, and, and when we're drawing close to him, what's, what better feeling is there in this life than to Jesus to live through us? Folks, there's not one. Folks, we can go out and buy all kind of stuff, go all kind of stuff. And you know what we're left with? Payments, bills. You know what? They hurt long after, don't they? They hurt long time after. But the thing is, when you go for Jesus, there's no greater feeling than that. Folks, I was, I'm not going to say it too much about it, but I was so blessed this week out of something. And I just thank the Lord for it. I thank the Lord for giving me that opportunity. And so I just want to ask you that. Let that be your prayer. Say, God, will you give me opportunities, Jesus, to live for you? And give me opportunities that you will live through me. Because, God, I want to serve you. I want to live for you. I want people to see, uh, to experience the Jesus that I have in my life. And, folks, he wants to do that tonight. And you know what? He will use you tonight. He will use you tonight. He wants you to do that. And, you know, so I, you know, and I know as we get older, we get tired. Uh, I'm a lot tired now than I was, uh, I was uh, 20 years ago, okay? And I know some of you say, you still a spring chicken, but I do not feel like those spring chicken. I feel like I've been run over by a train or concrete truck sometimes, but uh, uh, because I have, okay? <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, but um, where was I at? I'm sorry. What were we talking about? Y'all help me here. But anyway, I want to, if you're here today, God's not done with you. And look, if he uses, like I shared with you, some of those women, if he used them long after they were gone, uh, look, he, believe me, he, if you're here today, he's wanting to use you. But this is the thing. So many people put off living for Christ until they're older. They say, well, when I get at this milestone, I hit this time, I hit retirement, well, then I'm going to make myself available. But like I just said, when you get older, folks, you get tired. That's why you got to serve Christ now and do not let anything distract you from doing that. Because the devil will, the flesh will, people will, the world will, but Jesus don't want you to be distracted. You don't have to be the share about the donut. Okay, there's one way you can do something uh, and to get your stuff done. But ask God for strength. Ask Him for wisdom and, and let Him use you. Ask Him to open up doors and He'll use you. Uh, <clears throat> tonight, if you... Uh, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, uh, you know, all you got to do is receive Jesus Christ in your life. You know, just recognize that you're a sinner and believe that Jesus died for you on the cross, what the Bible says, and to confess Him as Lord. Pray to receive Him. Say, God, I want you to wash away my sin. I want you to change my heart. I know I've sinned against you. 
I know I'm in danger of being judged for my sins, but God set me free. Wash away my sin, forgive me. And because of the cross, folks, he can do that. As I shared with you, Easter, all the sin you've ever committed, all the sin I've committed, all the sin in my life from the day I was born to the day, probably even before I was born in the womb, I'm probably a wild child then, okay? But even to the day, wait until I've gone. Look, all that punishment was taken out of Christ on the cross. God is holy tonight. And folks, he can't just turn his head. He can't just, he can't be paid off because he's just. If he was corrupt, a corrupt judge, then, then he could turn his head. But he's not a he's just God. That's what the Bible says. So he has to punish sin. But if you hang on to Jesus Christ, your sin's punishment was taken out on Christ. Just ask him to save you. You don't have to have all this. Just You don't have to be one of the times saying all these words. Say, God, I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me. Come into my life. Set me free. Because I want to follow you. I want to be yours tonight. And that's it, okay? Who's watching and so forth? Let us pray. Anybody got anything like to say? Y'all ready to go to watch? Okay. Father, we praise you tonight. We thank you. Thank you for your word. Father, just pray Lord, that you'll speak to our hearts. And Father, we trust that your word will not return void. Thank you, Lord, for the messages, Father, that you give us, Lord. And Father, I pray, Lord, that that, that, that we'll all hear it and we'll put it into practice and we'll put it into play, Lord. Father, just remove distractions from us. Father, Ruth, Father, I ask you to remove distractions from each member of this church. Father, our own personal lives and what we're doing here, what's going on in the world. Father, use us to live for you. Father, tear those um, strongholds down. Father, tear those walls down. And Lord, just put blinders on us, Lord, like in the old days they would do the, the mules plow and the horses. They put them blinders on, Lord, so they could do their work. Father, do that to us. Father, let us have tunnel vision and look and only see the cross. Because, Father, you did promise to come back. We don't know if it'll be tonight or be 100 years from now. We don't know. But, Father, help us live for you like you are coming tonight. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for grace. Thank you for your blessing. Father, I ask your blessing upon each person that's in here tonight who will continue to work in their lives. Father, I just ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you'll take control of, of their whole lives, their whole heart. Father, help them with their finances, help them with their health. Father, help them with any kind of relationships, help them with their family. And Father, help them on their jobs. But Lord, give us, Father, let us all have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, give us wisdom. Father, give us knowledge. And Father, just fill our hearts full of your love. Lord, help us take you by the hand and walk with you. Father, thank you for what you're doing here. And Father, we're asking, Lord, that you'll do even greater things here, Lord. Father, get us all excited for you. And help us not be distracted. Father, help us be, help us be willing to show mercy to everybody. Help us, help us not get offended by little things. But Father, help us all come together in unity, Lord, and, and serve you, Lord. And uh, Father, we love you. We want your best for our congregation and our church family. Be with those who are not here tonight. Father, be with those who we who specifically were asked pray for, Lord. But we just thank you for your grace and your blessing. We love you, Christ. Thank you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.